Well, given what's at stake, should the beleaguered mainstream Conservative candidate Francois Fillon drop out of the running uh, for the presidency, uh, given uh, the questions that have been raised about his conduct? I'm joined now by Philippe uh, Malier, Professor of French and European Politics at University College London, and by the uh, French Algerian journalist Nabila Ramdani. Welcome to you uh, both. First of all, how much trouble is Francois Fillon in, in your view? A lot of trouble indeed. I think there's the start of this formal inquiry, you know, a few days ago. He had said uh, a few weeks ago, at the end of January, that he would pull out of the race should the, 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 the judges start this formal inquiry. And I so, sort of changing his mind. Of course, uh, that doesn't play that doesn't play down well with the with the supporters, the voters, but also insiders and parties. There are now people quitting, so it is very bad indeed. It's, it's weakened more than ever. And of course, it's going to be very hard for him now to to come across as a, as a credible candidate. I think he's lost that that, that, that kind of uh, uh, credit. You know, uh, uh, he, he can't be seen as a as a sort of honest and, and straightforward politician. I mean, there are two problems really, aren't there? One is what impact this is having on his standing, and he's saying he's a victim basically of a political witch hunt. On the other hand, there's there's you know, does it look as if he's going to uh, end up uh, in trouble with the law for what he's done? Well, I mean, to answer in a very straightforward manner your overall question, yes, absolutely, uh, François Fillon should pull out of the presidential race immediately for a number of logical, uh, legal and indeed moral reasons. And the first thing to say is that it's absolutely sensational and indeed unprecedented to have a candidate uh, who is uh, running for president, who is an indicted uh, criminal suspect. Uh, and for that reason, and that reason alone, he should uh, pull out. Uh, th this is a man who last weekend uh, um, uh, st stated that France was in a state of a civil war because protesters turned up at his meeting and he effectively compared their dissent to the situation of, a, uh, of, of, of insurrection. And yesterday at his press conference, he also accused the judiciary uh, or he equated his indictment by judges to a political assassination. So this is a man who sounds more like a rabid uh, conspiracy theorist than a would-be president of France. And, you know, we say France is, France is the home of surrealism, but this is absolutely surreal and indeed fantastical. Yes, I agree with that. Well, he seems to be also challenging the rule of law. You know, there are judges doing their work, there's a police investigating. Why questioning, why challenging their, their honesty, their probity? This is what he's doing. That reminds me of a man in Italy, which the French, the French political class used to mock, also in Britain a few years ago, Silvio Berlusconi. He was doing exactly the same. So this is where we are. This is quite serious. And of course, uh, it's very hard now for his supporters and, and, and the, the public, those who were willing to vote for him, to, to carry on. But, I mean, how seriously does the French public take this? Uh, bearing in mind that in the past, you know, uh, President Mitterrand raised, uh, had a mistress and uh, yeah. raised a child on the taxpayer without anyone one knowing. I mean, ha have the mores changed in France? There's a certain patience for that kind of thing in France, I agree. But here it doesn't play down well. I think according, there's evidence in the polls that even inside is an electorate, people are getting fed up. It's too messy. It's too dangerous because, I mean, the, the whole candidacy now might implode, you know, before the first round. So, of course, uh, the signs are, uh, the polls are saying, yes, the judges should carry on and do their job. So he's not, he's contradicted by his own supporters, in fact. And what, what are the consequences of him staying or going from this race, bearing in mind that we have uh, Marine Le Pen running strongly in the first round and we've now got the centrist candidate, Monsieur Macron, as well coming in? Well, I think the um, single most important reason why uh, Fillon is staying actually in the race is because he's hoping that he can avoid a trial by trying to win presidential immunity. Mm. And that's why I he... Mean, if, he had, if he got into the second round and, and beat Marine Le Pen, who we assume is going to be the other candidate, he would have immunity then, would he? Yes, indeed. And that would be an absolutely extraordinary situation when you will have somebody who will go in in the Elysee Palace as an indicted criminal suspect and he will use that uh, immunity to uh, get away with, uh, you know, the charges against him for at least five years. And, I mean, fundamentally as well, I mean, Philippe spoke uh, very aptly about, you know, the rule of 
law, uh, when the party, les Repu uh, the UMP, the name was changed to Les Républicains, the idea behind that was that the party would represent, would be committed to upholding the values and indeed the principles of the Republic, and that include uh, honesty, fiscal probity and respect for the rule of law. Do you think there's any chance he could get into the second round? And if he did, would he beat Le Pen? Who knows? This is a crazy election. Yes, yeah. he might even win it, uh, even all, with all the allegations. But I think really we're running out of time. Les Républicains are running out of time to replace him. That's also, he knows him. He knows it. And I, I think he knows that no one is in those circumstances is ready to step in to replace him. There could be a fairly unknown figure now stepping in, but of course, uh, you know, that would be good for the party. So. That we're running out of time because in two weeks' time uh, the candidacy will have to be uh, put forward uh, before the uh, uh, Constitutional Council, and that would be it. It would be too late to change anything. So he knows that. So in a sense, he might stay put just because, not because his situation is very good, but because there's no one ready to replace him. Purely selfishly, from the UK perspective, mm. who should we want to become the next president of France? I mean. Uh, politics is all about pragmatism and real politic uh, and uh, you say for the UK self-interest and I think somebody like Emmanuel Macron is very well versed in uh, the Anglo-Saxon culture. He understands the economy and that's the primary reason why Hollande brought him in his government as a finance minister to try to revive a failing socialist economy. He also knows about diplomacy and he's uh, sensitive about issues, especially national so cohesion. Think Macron, I mean, some people say Le Pen would be perfect because uh, she doesn't like the European Union either. Well, in that perspective, yes, maybe. But I think Le Pen is an extreme right candidate. I think extreme right is uh, something, uh, you know, France or any European country, but you know, I, shouldn't be trying uh, try to, att to attempt. Probably. I think this is a myth that uh, uh, Marine Le Pen is the Frexit candidate. If you listen to her, she has very muddled policies. One day she'll say she will remain in the monetary union. The other, she says, oh, I might organise a referendum. It's not very clear. She's what, by no what, means a clear cut. What's more, there candidate. is no majority amongst the public for, for, for Frexit for the time being. Well, it's going to keep us amused for the next two months for sure. Thank you both very much indeed. This is All Out Politics.